This attempt at saying this may help some people really see who they are. Now, imagine how hard it is to speak to your everyday, immediate Earth family. You know, I'm not trying to sound funny and say Earth family, but the people on this planet that are your family members, your mom, your dad, your siblings, your children, and say stuff like, you know that I'm still the name that I have, but beyond all that, I have merged with and understand and feel the vibrations of and can speak to spiritual beings, wherever you want to call them. It's not so woo-woo and crazy when you understand what it really means. And you try to tell people that, and they just don't get it, and they think you're weird. But if you would say to them, now, what are you sitting on? A chair? Is it really a chair? What is it made out of? Is it wood? Now, what is a wood? It came from a tree. What is a tree? It's something from either a forest or, a, or what we call a woods or a, a, a national reserve of trees, you know, something like that. And what is a tree? But it's a gathering of uh, a seed that fell into dirt, which gathered light and sun and, and, and uh, water and grew and, you know, gra- gathered materials out of the air and all those combined elements. And uh, you're sitting on it and you call it a chair. Now, you, sitting on that chair, are a gathering of different materials with a lot of the same proportionate, or not proportions, but a lot of the same contributing materials as that chair, the water, the earth, the sun, all these kind of things are you too. So you're not your name at all. Your name is just your, your symbol in space that you took on as you were born into this physical world. Now, that may sound so weird, But it's actually true. And you have a definition, a divine definition. But now you just think that you're just an everyday living thing like everybody else. And you're just doing your thing on this earth and this world, walking around, doing your stuff. I can show you the magic of what's really going on here. And I can make it so that it's not so fairy tale and and kitty. But I can also make it so that it is. The truth is really spooky. But if you realize that you don't die, you just change. And maybe you like the person you are, maybe you don't like the person you are, maybe you care about being here, maybe you don't care about being here. But it's all for a reason. And once you understand what the reason is, you start wanting to be here and wanting to do the right thing. You don't just go, oh, other people are never going to understand, screw this, suicide. I mean, there's plenty of times when you're going to think that, but it's about being stronger than that because those are still the vibrations of other people's thoughts and the way that the world around you makes you feel because you are given these emotions to react to. And it's your job, almost, not really a job, not I hate that word, but it's your task in a way to overcome those obstacles of those dark thoughts that do happen when you are faced with the hardest adversity, when it's you're showing your open heart, your love, your vulnerability, your truth, your straight out being accurately honest and, and true, and people just don't even care, don't even look, or are afraid to listen. And even if they do know or see that somewhat what you're saying makes a lot of sense, it spooks them away. And it's really hard to deal with that because the only way to overcome and and move forward is to get through these hard parts. And this is the hardest part. People do have to understand that to get through something, you got to go through the hardest part. This is like being birthed from the womb of of lesser minded nature into a womb of into a world of of more open-minded compassion towards each other in the world. Like literally, this is what we're going through. It's like a new birth of livingness, not just humans, but all things. It's a new birth. It's happening. And we are meant to do this together. And it would, wouldn't take much for even other beings, if there, if there really are archons and aliens, which there are, but they all happen in different ways than we think. We give them graphic details on movies and try to depict them however we can imagine them and how other people have written them on walls and hieroglyphs. and Don't worry about any of that. Interesting, sure. Does it matter? Is it true now? Whether it was true then or not, I can tell you, yes, they've all happened. And whether you understand that or not, they've all happened. 
You go into the dirt, the dirt shapes in the new things, it does new things, and it goes into the dirt. And that other stuff evaporates or dissipates into their own elemental material. That happens over and over and over and over and over and over again. You don't think it sounds weird that butterflies fly, but how about if you were the size of an ant and a butterfly looked like we look to an elephant, the size proportion. You've done all this on all these different quote-unquote planets. You're just one of the giants. We are the giants. We are the ones who can think and can comprehend and not act like these big, measly ogres. When we have movies where we're portraying ogres, it's us remembering past lives of smaller beings being tortured by humans. That's what our actual things are. It's timeless. If you really understood it, you'd be amazed once you actually remember doing it all these times and being the one who created it. Because you can attach to that and feel it. I know. I'm it. I understand the beginning. I've seen it and felt it and experienced it. All I can do is try to relay it to people in words. And they're more fascinated by a light show. And by other people just convincing them to be entertained or just to be duped. And I don't know what else I can do to deal with that besides allow them to make their mistakes while... I'm at risk of having my personal body harmed just by trying to care enough to say you're not going to tell me I'm wrong and I'm not going to listen to your garbage. A true realized or conscious or enlightened being wouldn't just be a silly sissy pushover. They'd speak the truth. And that's what people don't understand. They think a spiritual enlightened person would be like, oh, love and peace. Yes, I want love and peace. But when that's not what's around me, I can't interact with people who don't give two shits by being smiley and happy all the time. It doesn't work that way, and whether we want to face that or not, it's true. We've got to deal with the shit with being ready to take on shit and not being afraid to say it how it is. That's all for now. Peace.